So this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Speaking of doing things a little bit differently, uh, this video is gonna be a little different. We're gonna be working on some bike parts. Like a lot of you, I have been stuck at home and feeling a little cooped up and relieving a bit of stress by doing some bike riding and some bike building. In fact, I've kind of set myself a goal of making the lightest bike possible for under $1,000. Uh, what you see here is, I don't know, maybe 80% of the parts. We're still waiting on a few things, including the frame. Uh, but in this video, we're going to be concentrating on that rear cog. Uh, this is a fixed gear bike, which is a little strange. To make it even stranger, uh, it's a belt drive, which you really don't see very often. And there's some sort of intricacies uh, in a belt drive. The first strange thing about a belt drive is there is no grease. Like literally, check this out. The other weird thing is you are required to have a single speed. Well, sort of. You can get internal hubs that have different gears in them. Uh, and I've experimented with those in the past, but... I'm sort of a fixy kind of guy anyway. Uh, so this is just purely a fixed gear bike, which means when that back tire is spinning, so are the pedals, no exceptions, which means your feet always have to be on the pedals. And it means that's the only way you have to brake. Literally no brakes on this thing. A little dangerous, but also a lot of fun. The other kind of strange thing about a belt drive is that it doesn't split apart like a chain does. Uh, most bikes, you split the chain apart and feed it through the rear triangle. You can't really do that in a belt, at least not with this one. Uh, in the last few years, there is a company out there making split belts, but I'm not quite into that yet. Which means instead of splitting the belt, we have to split the frame. Uh, this is an aluminum frame, and it's not that big a deal to do. I made that rear bracket years ago, and it's held up great. On the new frame, it's going to be a little bit different, but we're going to have to get into that later. The other thing that complicates this, and the reason I'm making this video, is the original cog that was built for this belt drive setup is meant for a Shimano hub that has splines. This fixed gear hub in the back has threads instead. So I'm gonna have to make a new cog with threads instead of splines. Shouldn't be a big deal, but there are a few complicated parts about this machine process. All right, this is a pretty cool part to machine and it looks complicated, but in general, it's not too bad. There are two aspects that are gonna be a little bit challenging. Number one is this undercut. I've never had to do an undercut on a CNC before. Uh, but I have used a woodruff cutter or a T-slot cutter on a manual mill once or twice. Uh, and it's going to be a little tricky on the CNC. I really don't know what the feeds and speeds should be. My intuition tells me it's probably pretty slow because you've got a lot of teeth on the woodruff cutter. But our CNC doesn't have a lot of torque in the low end right now. So uh, I'm just going to have to experiment with it. And the thread milling, it's not complicated. I have only done it once before on the CNC. And to be honest, it's a little hairy. So... That's gonna be interesting. But in general, it shouldn't be too bad. Let's get started. By the way, when I started this project, this bike weighed about 22 pounds. Uh, by the time I'm done, I'm shooting for under 13, but we'll see. I think thread milling for any machinist is probably a little scary. First time, really scary. Beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Solid uh, engagement? No problem.
case you were wondering about the tram on this machine, because obviously on video this shows up way more than it really is. Uh, with my fingernail, uh, it's really imperceivable, so it's got to be awfully good. It's good enough for me.
All right, well, I think that went pretty well. I might do one or two things differently if I were to do it again. Uh, that is milled out of 6061 aluminum, and I'd probably switch to 7075. It's just a little stronger for this application. And I'd probably switch the order of the operations a little bit, uh, just so that there was no chance of run out between Ops 1 and Ops 2. If I make a second piece, I'll fill you guys in. And we have some good news for you. Good news, everybody. You've asked us about Death Metal Unicorn t-shirts a few times before. Not only do we have t-shirts, we have coffee mugs, we've got notebooks, we've got shower curtains and bedspreads and skirts yeah, whatever you want. Go nuts. Speaking of really good deals and other tenuous transitions, look, real talk, guys. Some of you have some way cooler projects than we do, but you're not really making videos about them. Some of you are making videos, but those videos are kind of, well... Have you thought about upping your game on that? Did you know what we do here is basically documentary filmmaking? What if I told you Skillshare has a class taught by Ryan Booth, a documentary cinematographer that worked on cool things like the behind the scenes for The Revenant? Uh, yeah, but Mike, you don't need that. You're basically a professional video editor. Uh, I could probably actually still learn a lot from it. But even better, how about you start helping out? Wait, I see where this is going. While you're at it, why don't you learn to do some editing so you can edit some of the film we've already recorded. Uh, Jordi Vandeput, a guy from Cinecom, has like six videos on Adobe Premiere. Is that what you use? And it's about to be what you use. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's probably too expensive for me, so... Actually, the first 1,000 of our subscribers to click on the link in the description will get two free months of premium Skillshare membership. Even when that runs out, it's only like 10 bucks a month. Oh. Uh... Okay, well, I guess I'll have to actually become a subscriber then. Anyway, that'll probably help us post more often and everything too, and we should probably be doing that. Yep. Um, I could probably also finally edit that Atomic Campfire video that we've kind of had filmed and sitting around forever, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe some of the cloud chamber updates? See, there you go. All right, let's read some comments. I was hoping maybe we could have a little dialogue about that. Uh, so this is going back to the enclosure video? Yeah. Hey, Mike. Uh, VPCNC says he's just here to propose the idea of using Linux CNC on your mill. Um, yeah, I have this amazing original idea for the channel. Use Linux CNC, use Linux CNC, Linux CNC, something, something, something. Uh, have you guys heard of Linux CNC? Are we done? Yeah. Oh, okay. Not forever. <laughs> uh, this is my life now. Going doors? Going doors instead of a sliding door. That would be totally yeah, awesome. That would be pretty sweet. Yep. Maybe That's, for uh, you Tesla fans, even some Falcon Wing doors. I don't even know the difference. <laughs> Peter says uh, you're going to start making stuff instead of just getting machine tools to fix other machine tools? It's a crazy idea, but it might just work. <laughs> Dean has one in here talking about some calculations for how big you should make an enclosure. Um, they're all universally bigger than what we're doing. So about that. like Yeah, I think our philosophy here is sort of just make it as small as possible just to save garage space because we just don't have a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I think we're not going to be too limited. We're going to get a full range of motion out of the machine. That's, that's basically uh, yeah. what I've been showing. Otherwise, it is nice to have some overhang space and things mm -hmm. like that if you're doing other parts. Yep. Uh, Meteor Plum says, whatever you name the CNC, the name for the enclosure should be Millhouse. <laughs> Excellent. Everything's coming up Millhouse. Uh, Tormox Pathpilot is based on Linux CNC. We did have a good time with that. It is. I like Pathpilot a lot, actually. And we knew it was based on Linux. Uh, you can actually get Pathpilot to work on a non-Tormox machine. It's a pretty big pain in the butt, though, and we decided it just wasn't worth the effort. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice to have the same interface between both machines, but for the amount of work that it would take to make that work, not so much. Yeah. And it doesn't even work on our hardware, right? Correct. Yeah, we'd, ha we'd have to buy a new controller and a bunch of other stuff. Zeliasp. Good name. I think I just had a stroke. <laughs> uh, any details on the lubrication system? Oh, okay. That's a good question. Uh, I actually have a bunch of stuff filmed for that video already, but I haven't posted it because, well, we have to make some changes. Uh, what I originally had planned uh, isn't going to work in the long term. So by the time I get to redoing it, we'll make a video and post it. Oh, that's not getting something right on the first try. That's amazing. Crazy. Peter says, uh, waiting patiently for the Elegoo Mars Linear Rail video and parts for sale. Well, for one, the part is for sale. If you buy the uh, AnyCubic Photon bracket, it is exactly the same part now. Yep, yeah, we've updated the design just slightly so that it fits both machines, so it won't matter which bracket you buy. 
and the install is almost identical to the AnyCubic install. In fact, actually, it's a little simpler, but we will make a video on that. Uh, stay tuned for that. Excellent. Uh, a couple of people looking forward to our videos on product development. Yeah, that's a big one. I think that people really underestimate it, what it takes to go from something that is a basic prototype that works and seems okay to something that you can actually manufacture. Absolutely. And we want to be clear, uh, we're not sharing any sort of expertise on this. This is really just our journey and what we learn along the way. Yeah. Oh, this guy says bare feet in a machine shop. Very ill-advised. You must be new here. Welcome to the channel. Oh, Aaron asks if uh, our Mach 3 screen set has a metric version. Oh yeah, actually it should work just fine as is for metric. All of the on-screen text is based on Mach 3 and what your settings are set to, so it should just work. Punk rock unicorn t-shirt? You hear that, Bianca? Punk rock unicorn t-shirt. By the way, Bianca is the most amazing artist that does all of our DMU stuff, so thank you, Bianca. Oh, uh, par for par 72 says, I'm new to the build and project. I got to add, you might want to think twice about enclosing your electronics in the nasty environment. A couple of things about that. Our enclosure is like a NEMA rated, totally enclosed thing, but we will probably also add some ventilation to it that pulls from outside of the enclosure. Yep. Yeah. In fact, the back wall of the electronics box uh, sits right up against the enclosure. So making vents through that's going to be real easy. So this is jumping over to the AnyCubic video now. Uh, David Lewis says, that was an interesting looking first part for the cleaning bath. It looked an awful lot like a belt drive pulley for a bicycle. Weird. Uh, George Todd says, the more I watch Physics Anonymous, the more I think it's some sort of obscure Tarantino movie where every unfinished story arc will come together in a spectacular way in the last act. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Bill Wynn III says, you've always been pioneers for safety, but a custom helmet to protect you against UV light is next level. Thanks. Why did I watch and listen to the entire last 40 seconds of Unicorn music? 